Hey guys, it's Elliot here and as you can see I'm sitting on my floor and you can see all my revision in the back. Um, I do apologise, I just can't be bothered to set up a camera for real right now and, and filming it with a good backdrop. Um, as you can tell from the title today I'm talking about a topic that has been playing on my li on my line. <laughs> playing on my mind a lot recently which is accepting I'll never be cisgender. So if you've never been on my channel before or you've only watched my last video then you may not know that I'm FTM trans which means I'm a boy born in a girl's body um, and today I'm going to be talking about how I'm feeling recently and my struggles in transition. Um, I'm 16 years old, I live in the UK and I've been on the gender click, gender click, the gender clinic waiting list now for 21 months um, and the referred time when I first um, was referred there was um, between 12 to 18 months so I've exceeded is it called I've, I've exceeded that dramatically now um, and I turned 16 on April 14th 2019 and now it's the like 15th of May today um, I don't know when this video will be out but um, so I've been 14 for a very long time sorry my phone's over there so i can't even check that or oh, turn on silent so people i think from a cis person's perspective if you don't know what cis means it just means when you're biologically born the gender that you're kind that you feel so for example i'm not cis because i'm transgender like I wasn't born in a boy's body, therefore I'm not cis. Whereas if you're a girl and you were born in a girl's body, you're cis. If you're a boy and you were born in a boy's body, you're cis. Um, but I think it's hard for cis people to understand um, why it's such a struggle for transgender people um, and why accepting that, you know, I'll never be cis is such a hard thing. Um, because there is procedures obviously to make things um, better so for example um, cross hormones you could have hormone blockers before puberty um, top surgery bottom surgery and um, I'm listing the ones that I know for FTM trans right now but just because that's obviously what I look into because I am FTM trans um, obviously I know all the procedures for um, MTF but I'm not going to go over them right now just because I don't have experiences with them obviously so I wouldn't have an insight but um, obviously there's procedures that can make me feel a little bit better um, if I had top surgery then yes I would feel better if I had testosterone in my body right now yes I would feel better if I had bottom surgery yes I would feel better but at the end of the day I'm never I've spent 16 of my 16 years of my life so far in this body that isn't correct and every day is so hard for me um like as you can see this obviously is a very upsetting topic for me i think it is for any transgender person what the fuck is that fly doing that's a big fly um so it's hard for me to kind of get out but um i'm gonna do my best to try and explain why this is such a hard thing and why it needs to be dealt with in a better way within the NHS um, to make it easier for people. So as I said before, um, you may be confused as to why if you're not trans, as to why like it is so hard and it's just purely because the thing is I've spent 16 years of my life already in the wrong body. I don't know how long I'm gonna have to wait till I get surgeries. And even then I don't even know if I'm gonna be happy because I never will have experienced what other boys experienced, what other cis boys experienced. Um, as soon as I realized I was trans, I knew I was at a disadvantage in life. Like that's just how it is. Um, I do believe that I can be happier, but I don't believe that I'll ever be truly happy and I don't believe that my dysphoria will ever go because at the end of the day, I'm not a cis male and that's what my dysphoria comes from. If you don't know what dysphoria is, sorry, um, it's like the discomfort of um, when you feel like your brain doesn't match your body. So I have a male brain, but a female body that doesn't match up. So this causes me a lot of distress. Um, 
that's the definition more or less. So currently I'm trying to accept that I'll never be cisgender, but one thing that's making this very hard for me at the moment was I read an article about a man who had lost his um, genitals in war, um, and this comes up very frequently, um, obviously, um, and the article was talking about how he didn't feel himself and, and stuff like that. Um, and he got a transplant and everything and everything was all right again um, and it really annoys and frustrates me that the public seem to have so much sympathy for people in this position um, and they're willing to help but then when it comes to trans man it's completely different because for some reason it's different to us but I could tell you the exact feelings that that cis male is feeling for not having what he lost but the difference is I've never been able to experience it, but I can still tell you exactly how that feels. And I'm, and like, it's just so annoying. Like, it just makes me angry because I'm never gonna be cis. I'm never gonna get these 16 years back where I haven't been able to be who I am. Um, and I don't know how long it's gonna be until I can be who I am and who I'm meant to be. So obviously it's just not great at the moment, is it really? And that's another thing, like even with cis males, if, if you find a cis male that has an erectile dysfunction, it's the fucking end of the world. It really is. But again, trans males, it just doesn't seem to matter because people don't wanna believe it, even though it's been, you know, scientifically proven. Um, you know, I have a mental disorder, but I still have to pay £5,000 to get surgery. And the thing that, that actually makes me um, laugh is the fact that when I talk to my friends about it or people that ask questions, because I am happy asking questions about it, answering even, um, and they're, they're like, so how much does it actually cost? They're expecting me to say, like, £1,000. And then I say, well, you know, for top surgery, it can be six thousand pounds and for bottom well <laughs> it could be from twenty four thousand to a hundred thousand like depending where you are what surgeon you have and, and i bet the prices will be risen by the time that i get there and people genuinely when i tell them that their jaw drops because they're like you can't like i can't control it i have no control over this but i'm being like there's no way around it i can't see the thing is most things in life if you are depressed because of like if you're depressed you usually can find some sort of cure or some way to like make it a lot better for you like you have control over it to an extent I understand I go through mental health problems I'm not trying to say that if you're depressed you can just be happy that's not what I'm saying um, but my point is most things in life we have control over but the one thing that means the most to me in the world and, and the, just the most to me, I have no control over, zero control over, and it's really upsetting and frustrating, and I don't know what I'm going to do, because I feel like even after these surgeries and, and, and hormones, I'm still not going to be happy, because I don't even think I know any trans um, man that's actually truly happy and content with how he is having had certain surgeries or maybe not all of them but then can't go on to anymore because he can't afford it like i i haven't like i'm a normal guy like i don't have this money to go privately just for hormones because i can't do that and another thing is i don't even know like because i'm not educate like because it's not educated on enough not even i'm unfamiliar with like i know i can have top surgery before i'm 18 i know i can have it past 16 but where do I go? What do I do? Who do I go to? How much is it going to cost? I can't get £6,000 right now. I'm a 16-year-old boy, but I don't want to, like, I don't enjoy... Hmm, I don't enjoy every day anymore because I, I can't... Like, I don't think people will ever understand. I'm not expecting people to understand that aren't in the same position as me. But I just... I can't, like, even do certain things like this summer is going to be so horrible because it's another summer of binding and it I just can't be bothered for it like I'd rather just I don't know what I'd rather do but it's going to be horrible I'm going on holiday in July to Turkey and I'm scared because I 
want to just be able to walk shirtless when it's 47 degrees out but I'm not going to be able to do that. I don't know. This video isn't actually me accepting our no be cisgender because that is something that is going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think I'll ever be able to accept it. I really don't. But it's something that I've got to learn to do and it's something that everybody's got to learn to do this transgender but whether it's just going to be such a long hard draining journey really and I'm sorry this video has been so negative but I really did just need to talk about it and to just kind of get some awareness for people um, that are in the same position as me like I'm not happy and I haven't been happy for 16 years and I can't see me being happy anytime soon and I know that people might think I'm selfish because I have a supportive family and I have supportive friends I have a supportive girlfriend and other people may not be as lucky as to be in a position that I'm in but at the end of the day if I'm not happy I'm not happy I can't control that and like I don't know obviously I've got GCSEs this month and they've been so much harder purely because it's just so hard to get out of bed every morning and it's so hard to concentrate on school when you're also trying to not feel sad 24 7. So to not make this video completely negative, I'm gonna give a few coping mechanisms I have if there's any trans men out there or trans women watching this, um, uh, uh, watching this that are in the same position as me and feeling similar to me. Um, so if you don't know, if you haven't watched the last video on my channel, I'll link it down below, but I've started up abstract painting and I've actually made a lot of paintings. Um, this is something that's easy to do. Um, abstract painting doesn't have like a lot of talent involved like if you're not good at art don't worry like this is it's honestly take my word for it you don't like I'm not good at art but this doesn't even matter like you just do what you want um, the video you'll see um, but it helps me because it's very therapeutic um, I really enjoy it it's it's very calming and it just gives me like a time to escape from everything and to stop thinking about that and just um, just paint and it just makes me really happy and I know a lot of trans guys that actually do it such as like Storm Ryan and um, Parker um, and which I'll link their channels and their videos in the description below as well another thing I've done I um I've started a journal and it costs like 4 99 I do a mood tracker so I can keep track of that um, sometimes I log my days and then a lot of the times I'll talk about how I'm feeling. I did like a six page um, just rant really about how I was feeling at a time. It really helps because it's, it's good to like get everything out in one place rather than having it all in your brain. Um, it d does definitely help me. Um, they're the two main coping mechanisms I use. I don't have any others, I'm afraid, and I'm sorry if you were expecting more. Um, gender dysphoria is something that I've never been able to, um, you know, cope with besides, you know, getting a binder. Um, but that's, I've had that for like two and a half years now, so even now that's doing very little for me. Um, I'm currently wearing it and I'm in a lot of pain and it's very uncomfortable for me. Um, and I cannot wait for the day where I can just feel my t-shirt on my skin and when I go into to go swimming I can just feel the water on my chest like oh I can't even like see it's like li really little things that I've never been able to experience but would make me so happy and that is something that I think people need to to be aware of I'm not asking for the world <laughs> That is going to be it for this video and I'm sorry that it was so sad or, you know, it was more or less a rant. Um, I really didn't mean for, well I didn't, I knew it was kind of going to go this way but I didn't want to, I don't want to upset anybody or make anybody in a similar position as me have a negative effect, uh, outlook on it as well. But it just, it's something that I, it's been playing on my mind and I feel like a lot more people will be able to relate with it. And when I see that other people can relate with it, then maybe it will make me feel better too. Um, the link to all my social medias will be in the description. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.